Let's get it on. I right, y'all fly eagles fly. Your boy Murph back again here. Want to get into a little film study on my man Sidney Brown, who I believe is my second favorite draft selection. Of course, after Jalen Carter, who your boy willed into existence, right? Through osmosis for my man Howie Roseman. As a matter of fact, hit Howie's music, please. This is how we do. Yes, sir. Howie Roseman had your boy sleeping like a baby because, man, I am so in tune with this roster. I feel like, obviously, we can win the Super Bowl next season. No doubt about that. But, man, he stocked the cupboard for the future as well. I say this. There are no draft picks who are selected who will be counted on to be starters. Imagine that. Say that again with me. None of these guys have to be starters. If someone does start, uh, man, it's just it's just kudos to that particular player right there. Even Jalen Carter. But look at this. Arm over and then dun, 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 prison loving ensues. <laughs> what was this? He picked up my man Jaden Daniels like a prize. He had himself a new what it was called them new them newbies, right? The prison bunkies or whatever like that. He had himself a prize. He's like, I like you and I want you. Right, think about this. I look at Jalen Carter as a five technique, an eventual replacement for my man Fletcher Cox, right? One of the greatest to do it in the franchise. I look at someone like Milton Williams as a replacement for Javon Hargrave, already on the roster there, already played behind Javon Hargrave. He's more of your three tech ty type. Uh, one of these guys, of course, you're playing uh, outside the guard. And of course, he's also um, penetrating, getting upfield. He's going to have to show something against the run. Maybe that's where he can differentiate himself from Javon Hargrave. But then they signed Contavious Street at that position as well. Those guys are more your three technique type. So where would Jalen Carter actually start? Imagine that because you're going to have big Jordan Davis starting at the nose. If we're talking about what I believe, Sean Desai's defense. So I said it first, it should be an odd front defense. And they're drafting players who played in odd front schemes along the line of scrimmage. Like a Nolan Smith who shouldn't start, right? He's a long-term replacement for Hassan Reddick or playing with Hassan Reddick or rotating in. Maybe you play him off ball, which I would prefer him to be played off ball. He does not have to start. Um, of course, Tanner McKee is not going to be starting. And uh, I am, man, beyond that, see, now I'm drawing a blank right there. But listen, anybody you can think of, Keely Ringo, of course, definitely not starting. Uh, eventually can be a replacement for a, a Darius Slay, maybe. Or he could be want to get starting safeties eventually, but you already have Terrell Edmonds at one safety, a former first round draft pick, one of my favorite players in the league from those Virginia Tech Hokies. A uh, guy in his own right is a height, weight, speed freak. You sign Justin Evans at another safety position. Those guys could be your starters. And of course, um, some of the guys who are already on the ro roster, of course. So even Sidney Brown does not have to start. Sidney Brown can be worked in at a myriad of positions. I look at Sidney Brown very much like I look at Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. As a matter of fact, all right, I need you guys to keep in mind that it's a different defensive coordinator. So what Gannon did will not necessarily be germane to what Sean Desai did. Coach Desai, who I got a chance to cover him with Seattle, right, a primary cover on the channel here, they run more of a balanced show. So – Keep that in mind there, although they will rotate. It's very much like you see here from Illinois, but Brown's assignments at Illinois was definitely being a strong safety. He's working to the close side of the formation in man coverage with a tight end. That is a valuable asset to have in a defensive back. On this one right here, he'll show off a little bit of range. You get them rolling the free safety to the post here, so they'll rotate. Uh, he'll follow the wide receiver right here. I forget if he's submarine or if he's going on under or over or whatever like that. Well, let's just say he's going over right here. You'll see his range to be able to tackle this guy out in space. This is some incredible range, some incredible speed. And this guy is an absolute junkie in the film. Room. You can just tell. See right here. I look at him roll. So he is going over. Look at that. Create the space and Yaka. Uh, 
Look at that. Coming out in space. Let's slow it down right here. Here you go. Look at him. His first step here. I will say this, right? I'm going to show some things that he's not good at as well. He is extremely aggressive. His first step is usually towards the line of scrimmage. He wants to get that action. So pause. But look at him. Step towards the target here. Now look at him have to navigate over and under here right here with the referee. And then the potential rub there. You can see him still on it. Look at this. Nothing but air space and opportunity. And look at him as a striker. Oh, look at that. Man, he may have cleansed his colon a little bit with that. Look at this. Oh, a colon blow. Look, head on the outside. Extremely perfect technique. You know what I'm saying? My man, Chauncey Gardner, didn't always have perfect technique, right? He was just one of those hurlers, right? He would hell hurl his spine and his neck into you, trying to paralyze himself and stuff. But this dude right here, perfect technique. Wrap and roll exactly how you design and how you teach it for a defensive back. Y'all know I get excited, man, when we talk about safety play, off-ball linebacker play, running back, all the positions that I play. This kid, I'm telling you right now, Malcolm Jenkins was my favorite, my former favorite Philadelphia Eagles. Sidney Brown, he's got a lot of that Malcolm Jenkins in him. With Malcolm Jenkins, it was all up here, and then his athleticism manifested that. Sidney Brown, man, I'm telling you. All right, I want you to see him fill in right here. You can see a man up on the tight end and then watch him set the edge right there. Look at him push the running back. My man, Ant Grant. Ant Grant in the building, baby. Y'all remember him from back in the day? I worked his, his uh, recruitment coverage there. But listen, my man right here, you can see him streaming along, right? Almost got a linebacker's mentality when it comes to flow and approach there. Look at him. Keeping that outside shoulder, right? Outside shoulder force. Right? Ben is his assignment. He knows that the tight end is just going to be in the block right here. Rumbling, bumbling, stumbling right there. But it gets that depth right there, that outside depth, the force to run back inside, just like you would do as a linebacker. Trips up Ant Grant right there. Makes him splatter whack himself. Good football IQ. Same deal right here. I've been in this before, right? I've been in this situation before. You get that motion to tight. They're going to be trying to set the edge based off you. You see him right here. They're going to be running that quick zone. You get zone flow across the board here. Mohammed Ibrahim right here. This is a dude right here. I love this dude a lot. Right, I think the Jets drafted him. He'll be very good, right? Um, you'll see him with that zone flow, and they isolate right off of him, but it doesn't matter. He can hold up at the point of attack off of the closed side of the formation. Check it out right here. Stays widest of the wide, and uh, strikes and attacks. A guy like Mohammed Ibrahim who will – run you over now. Mohammed got him later in the game as well, but you can see right there, the aiming point right off of him. You see all the block in the flow right there. Isolate right off of him. Isolate the strong safety, and it don't matter. Look at him. Head on the inside this time right there. <laughs> he had to do what he had to do to get Mohammed Ibrahim on the ground, but great help defense right there. He's in man coverage with the tight end here. However, watch him flow with the, the running back. You get Ibrahim here. He's flowing this way, and then he reverses course. And my man, Brown here, same deal, right? On the same exact plane, meet him. When you drop him into the box, he's going to be able to do some serious work. Watch this. Linebacker death. Everyone's flowing. Look who puts that foot in the ground and flows with him. <laughs> Come on. How you don't like this shit, man? Real football heads unite, baby. Fly, Eagles, fly. Look at this. Closed off right there. The bang of bounce theory, he has neither, right? You got a front breach here. Ibrahim puts that foot in the ground, reverses course. Brown puts that foot in the ground, reverses course, goes flat down the line of scrimmage extremely fast. Ibrahim can't really get much out of it. Nasty. Once again, in the box, getting physical with the tight end. I want you to see the Johnny on the spot drawing right here. Look at this. Uh embraces for impact right and look at that Johnny on the spot I'm not sure where the quarterback was going with that John but you see my man show off that 4-4 speed as well and making a return right here. check this drawing out right here look at my man go back and pause it for you, you see him fighting with the tight end right there remember ah, man what is he 5'11 6 feet 2 5 205 or something like that right so he's got some pretty decent size to him but it's the strength through the core, it's the technique, and it's the wherewithal and understanding of football, period. Looks like the quarterback right here was hit. He might was trying to deliver the ball down the field right there, but definitely took away that initial read there with the chicken fighting stage. 
And look at him, always keeping his eyes up. Phil grabs the pill. My man right here, right down Market Street. Look at that. Oh. Come on, man. Listen. That man with Terrell Edmonds and Justin Evans working in immediately. So this was not good by him. He's in man coverage on the tight end. I told you about his aggressiveness. His first step usually towards the line of scrimmage. They got him good on this pistol play action fake right here. Look at him. You see that? Step towards the target and then let the tight end go. And he had a poor angle right here as well. Looks like he was kind of blocked by his free safety teammate, though. Right there, so he wasn't able to get the tight end and led to a, what's wrong with the tight end? Like, you're running with two left knees. What the fuck? Why is he running like that? Come on, Mike. He <laughs> got two left knees. That's that's not hard. That's not hard. But, yeah, sometimes his, his over-aggressiveness can definitely uh, be to a, to a bit of his detriment. However... Uh, you don't want to coach that out of him because it's also led to him making some very good plays at and around the line of scrimmage as well. So he has to have a little bit of balance. So it's not something that I'm worried about. We can see him once again being isolated, holding the point of attack. Look at this. You saw that? Oh, that is absolutely perfect. That's how you would do it if you were a damn defensive tackle. If you're Jalen Carter or somebody like that, watch him meet the inertia, but watch him keep the feet parallel. Right? He wants to wall and discard. Keep the feet parallel, walk off the defender, right? Like a walk-off home run like my boy Darren Dalton back in the day right there. And look at that. Steep, keep it on the outside, running back has nowhere to go. And, of course, he's going to wrap and roll. His freaking tackling technique, I'm telling you, man, not too many people are doing that these days. That's what separates the good from the great, in my opinion, right there. You can do a lot of shit well, and you get to the moment of, of impact or the moment of truth scenario right there and fail because you can't tackle correctly. This mother, this dude right here is hard. All right, check this out. My man is money in zone coverage. That's just that football intelligence. You'll see him work here. He'll drop. They'll be running a little bit of a mesh concept right here. You have the tight end who he's initially manned up on, but then he sinks into his zone. You'll have the the inside receiver right here. Right, the tight slot, he'll be working this way. He's going to drop back here, take this away, and then get back into the throwing plane and make himself an interception out here in space. So he can work out in space as well. Look at that right there. He took that away initially. Quarterback had to go somewhere else with it, and uh, he doubled back on it, got himself an interception. You'll see a little bit better on this angle right here. We'll pause it right there. Watch this. Right, he was waiting for that to to clear right there. Gets out there, he drops back. I don't know if you can see it right there. He drops back there, and then he gets the wherewithal to press it back to the inside, and he's gone off with the pill. That's hard. It's pile driven though. <laughs> he sleep. <laughs> I love the beginning of this play. I hate the end of it. Look at him in man coverage on the tight end right here. Check this out. Squatting on him. He has squatters rights. And look at him. Stay tight to the vest right here. Really good man coverage right there. But then look at his aggressiveness right here. Blow the entire thing with him hitting the quarterback after he slid. Oh, that's bad. Look at this. Oh. Then he gets up like a little bad little kid. Talking about something. What, 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 what did I do? <laughs> Badass little kid, though. But, man, that damn man coverage. Squatters rights. Not in this pedal or anything like that. Waiting for the tight end to react. He decreases the space right there and then stays in his hip pocket. Obviously, you know, we're going to see a lot of good tight ends next year. And uh, especially in the Super Bowl, especially if we see Travis Kelsey again, uh, having somebody with enough experience in college. Uh, we'll see how it translates over there. But just definitely somebody at the very least, uh, we can stick on tight ends and see how he fares there. The Philadelphia Eagles, man, you always have to have some type of enforcer, right? I remember when I was a little kid, Andre Waters, that was my dude right there, man. God bless him, man. Of course, Brian Dawkins, B. Dawkins. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Come on. Oh, my God. Right? Ooh, man. Stool softener city right here. Bang. 
from way downtown, bang. Look at that right there. So obviously he passed away. But the great thing about that is he revived himself, right? And was a straight gombi. He was a gombi, a ghost zombie. Watch, watch this. He like floats away. <laughs> I don't have the rest. <laughs> I don't have the rest of this, but he continued to float in the air and he floated away. <laughs> He's a gombi. Come on, man. All right, last one right here. Real men watch to the end. You can see him work out in space. Look at them cover, right? What I tell you, split the difference. They have duality at safety a lot in the Sean Desire scheme. And uh, you will see him right here. Get that. Look at him. Turn on it. Get himself an interception. Show a little bit of range right there. We got him. Initially, he was riding the stitches right here. You can see him riding the stitches. Reading the quarterback who's on the same hash. And he gets over there. It was going to be a go route. And uh, he shows he's had some range as well. A man can do it all, man coverage. Um, of course, he can work in the box. Um, that may be a bit of his strong suit right there, but man coverage as well on the tight ends. And then he has range. So very much like you would find in a mold of a Chauncey Gardner, who obviously, or I guess you guys don't know, when I first covered him in high school, he was a cornerback. And he was that at the University of Florida, and then he switched to safety. Brown looks like he may have a little corner in his background, but he got to play a lot of man coverage there. So, man. I don't know what to tell you. I'm mean, super excited about this this pick of Andre Brown, and I can't wait to see him get the work out there, man. So everybody stand up, baby. South Jersey, we in the building, baby. Bridgeton, Vineland, Millville, AC, Cape May, right? Anything. Trenton, all, everybody out in Jersey, baby. Shout-outs to the whole Philly. Shout-outs to Delaware, Christiana, Newark, Wilmington. You already know the deal, right? Listen. Make sure you subscribe. If you're not subscribed and you're a Philadelphia Eagle fan, I know I'm new uh, to the fan base or whatever like that, but I ain't new to Philly Eagles football. Obviously, it's been my team since like 1990, baby. So make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend that this is where the best Eagles shit will be at. We will be getting it in quite a bit here, all right? It's your boy, Mid-Atlantic Murph, a.k.a. Jersey Murph. Make sure you hit that thanks button. Your boy be bringing that hibachi and salute. Let's get it. What more can I say? Top billing. Top.